All right, guys. So currently we have succeeded in making the world's most boring app because all it does is it changes the dice images when it loads up. And when we press the roll button, it changes the dice faces to dice four. And that's it. There's nothing else that happens. So this won't do. How can we make it better? Well, it would be great if these images could actually change every time we press the roll button. So in order to do that though, we need to have a sequence of all our images lined up so that we can pick and choose which one we want to show. So how can we create a sequence of things? Well, we need to use something called an array. Delete everything that you currently have inside your view did load. So remember inside means inside the curly braces and do the same in the roll button pressed IB action. Now, instead, we're going to create an array. Now, an array is simply an ordered sequence of items. And the type of items that I want to put in a sequence is, of course, all six of our dice face images. So I'm going to go ahead and simply create an image literal. And I'm going to add my dice one. So now I have a single image literal and I'm going to put it inside an array. And I do that by putting a set of square brackets around it. So now I have an array with one item. And it's important to note that while you're programming, you can see there's a whole bunch of different types of brackets, right? We've seen round brackets like these, curly brackets like these, and now we're looking at square brackets. Just remember that in Swift, square brackets are pretty much exclusively used for holding a collection of items. And in our case, it's going to be a collection of image literals. So we've got the first image down, but now I'm going to select it, hit command C to copy it. And then I'm going to add a comma and then paste it so that I have a second one. And I'm going to do this until I have six image literals on screen, like so. So now I have an array, but I have an array of the same image. So instead, I'm going to double click on the second one, change it to image two, third one's going to be three and so on and so forth until I've created myself an array of all the possible images I could place into my image view. So all six dice faces. Now, once I've created my array, you can see that I'm getting a yellow warning that says expression of type an array of UI images is unused. So at the moment, it's kind of just sitting there, kind of unloved and unused. So let's use it and make it feel useful. And we're going to do that by setting the dice image view one to show one of these images from the array. So I'm going to write dice image view one dot image, of course, to change the image property. And I'm going to set it equal to the value. But of course, I can't set it equal to the entire array. And Xcode tells me as much. I can't set six images into one image slot, right? Which one is it going to show? Instead, I have to specify the actual item in this array that I want to show in my dice image view. And I do that by adding another set of square brackets. Now inside the set of square brackets, I can specify which item I want out of this array. So if I add the number one right here, then you might think that we will get the first image out of the array. But in fact, if I run the app and press the roll button, you can see that strangely enough, it's showing me the second image. And you can see that if you change this to two, it's going to show dice three. And if you change it to three, then it's going to show number four. So what's going on? Well, it's because programmers like to count from zero. So we like to use the full 10 digits from zero to nine. This one is actually at the position zero, and this one is at position one, two, three, etc. So once you adjust that, then if I put in zero, then that's going to pick out the first item. Here's a challenge. Change the code that you see right now so that you display the six dice image. 
All right, so let's try this out. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if we change that to five and then run our app, then we get die six showing up. So easy enough. Now I'm gonna set that position number back down to one so that we get the second dice image being shown. But now I wanna be able to give this value a name so that I can refer to it in exactly the same way that I can refer to my dice image view one or dice image view two, because they have a name, I'm gonna go right up here just below my IB outlets and I'm gonna create a variable. And I do that using the var keyword and then I'm gonna give my variable a name and I'm gonna call it left dice number and I'm gonna set it to equal this value. So I'm gonna cut that value from here and paste it in here instead. So now that value is now stored inside a named variable called left dice number. And I can refer to that value if I ever need to by using its name, which is left dice number. So now our code works exactly the same way as before. And when the dice image view needs to figure out what image to display, it gets the value of left dice number. So this gets replaced by one, and then it picks out the zero, one, so that particular image to put into its image view. So what has this achieved? It seems like we've just written some extra code and it hasn't really changed anything about our app. So what was the point? Well, now that we have a variable and we have a name pointing to a specific piece of data, we can now keep track of this piece of data and we can change it. We can vary it essentially. So down here, after we've assigned the image view an image, the next task we're gonna get it to do is to increase the left dice number. So we're gonna set the left dice number to equal the current value of left dice number, which is of course one. We're gonna set it to equal that value plus one. So now let's imagine ourselves as the computer. When we first press the roll button, we know that this block of code gets triggered. And the first thing that happens is we set the dice image views image to the number one position from the array. So this particular image, the next thing that happens is we increase that number to one plus one, which is two. So that means this variable now is holding the value two. And the next time we press the roll button, well, this is now two. So it's going to pick out the third image from our array. And this goes on and on until we get to the very end of our array. So if you run your app at this point and you click on the roll button, changes to the second image and then the third and then the fourth, the fifth, until it runs out of images because there is no seventh image. And this is the point when our app will crash because we're out of range. We're out of images to show, but that's fine. We've achieved the goal of actually making our user interface do something different every time we press the roll button. And we've achieved this by having a value that we keep track of and we give it a starting value of one but now every time the roll button gets pressed, we increase its value. And so we can go through our sequence one by one and display all of the images that are inside. Now, here's a question for you. What happens if I cut this line of code and paste it into my roll button pressed? What do you think will happen if you had to guess? Now pause the video and run the app as it is and see if your guess was correct. Now what happens here is that when we press on the roll button, it puts that number one into here and we pick out the second image, which is the one that we're seeing on screen. But watch what happens when I press on the roll button again. Absolutely nothing. So why is that? Well, remember that we said this line of code where you have the var keyword, well, that creates a variable. 
and it gives it a value at the point of creation. So it's set to equal one. That one gets put in here and now left dice number is increased by one. So at this point in the code, left dice number actually equals two. But the next time that you press the roll button, we recreate our left dice number and we set it back down to one again. So now at this point, the left dice number is now equal to one again. And you can actually confirm this by using that print statement that we learned earlier on. By printing the left dice number there and printing the left dice number down here as well. And when you run your code, and you press the roll button, you can see that the first print statement gets fired and one is printed. And then it continues until the second print statement gets fired and two shows up. But if I press on the roll button again, it's still one and two, one and two. Whereas if I move this part where I create the variable and give it an initial value back up to the top of the file, well then, when I run my app and we take a look at what's being printed, then you can see when I press the roll button the first time, the left dice number starts out being one, but then it gets changed to two. Now, if I press the roll button again, then the left dice number at this point is now two, and then it gets changed to three, and then three to four, four to five, and that's why our images keep changing. So remember that when you press the roll button, all of the code inside this block gets triggered again. So print statements are really helpful when our code is not doing what we expect it to do. And it can help you diagnose the problems by looking at what your expectations are. So what would you expect the left dice number to be at this point? And what would you expect it to be here? And then looking at the reality. And of course, you can use a string interpolation to actually make this a lot easier on the eye by saying left dice number at beginning equals, and then we're gonna add that backslash and parentheses and put in the name of that variable to be printed. And then down here, we're going to write left dice number at the end is equal to, and so we won't get so confused by just looking at numbers. So when I press roll, you can see at beginning equals one, at the end equals two, at the beginning equals two, at the end equals three. This is really, really helpful for us to diagnose problems. All right, so here's a challenge for you. At the moment, our left dice will increase in number until the number six, at which point when we press the roll button, our app will crash. This is fine. But as a challenge, I want you to figure out how you can change the code to get the right image view involved as well. But it's not as simple as simply repeating what we did with the left side. Now, when you run your app, what we want to happen is when I press roll, the left side goes to two, but the right side goes to six. And then the right side will count down while the left side goes up until your app crashes when the left side reaches six and the right side reaches two. Pause the video and see if you can complete this challenge. So here's what we would do. Let me go ahead and delete these comments and print statements to declutter our code. And notice how I'm currently inside the view control.swift instead of being inside main.storyboard where we have the split view. And this is because when your code editor has a very, very small amount of width, it will wrap the code onto different lines, making it quite confusing to see what's going on. So when you're done usually with designing your app and creating the IP outlets, I tend to recommend students to head straight for the view controller so you get as much space as possible to be able to write your code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out the dice image view two with the sixth image. Right here, when we have the roll button pressed, we're going to tap into the dice image view two and set the image property to equal the sixth image in this array. So I'm simply going to copy this line of code here to save myself a bit of time. 
And instead of left dice number, if I want to pick out this sixth image, I have to put the number five here. So what if instead of having this number five hard coded, which I can't change because I don't have access to it using a reference like the left dice number, what if I create a reference to it? So I create a variable called right dice number, and I set that equal to the value I have here. So I'll cut it from here and I'll paste it in here. So now I've got this thing called right dice number and it holds that value five. So I can now use that right dice number here instead of that number five. When I run my app right now and I press the roll button, my dice image view two is now showing the fifth item in our array, which is of course dice six. Now all I have to do is figure out how to step down this number by one each time. Well, that's where we're going to vary our variable right here. So after it's displayed the image, we're going to set the right dice number to equal the current value, which is five. And then instead of plus one, we're going to minus one. So now it's equal to four and then it's equal to three and then two and then one. So if I run my app right now and I press my roll button, it shows exactly the behavior I showed you earlier on. Did you manage to get that? If not, be sure to continue to the next lesson where we do another swift deep dive on variables and arrays. But if all of that made a lot of sense and you already know about variables and arrays, then feel free to skip the next lesson and continue building out the app.